Hello everyone, and welcome to today's discussion over glomerular filtration rate and the forces that are involved. We will first begin our discussion with a quick overview of the structure of the glomerules, wherein we will then move on to the process of glomerular filtration, where we will discuss the forces that allow the process to occur. Finally, we will look at glomerular filtration rate, how it is calculated, and its application in the medical field. Now, if you're ready, Let's begin. <clears throat> Layers of the glomerulus membrane. The glomerulus is a loop of capillaries twisted into a ball shape surrounded by the Bowman's capsule. It is found within the nephrons of the kidneys that filter a portion of water and solutes from the circulating blood. The blood enters the glomerulus through the efferent arterioles and exits through the efferent arterioles. There are three layers that make up the glomerulus membrane in which fluid must pass through before entering Bowman's capsule. These include the glomerular capillary wall, basement membrane, and the inner layer of the Bowman's capsule. Collectively, these layers function as a fine molecular filter that retain the blood cells and plasma proteins, but permits oxygen and solutes of smaller molecular dimensions to filter through. Now let's consider each layer in more detail. Let's first look at the glomerular capillary wall. The glomerular capillary wall consists of a single layer of flattened endothelial cells. It is perforated by many large pores that make it more than 100 times more permeable to oxygen and solutes than capillaries elsewhere in the body. The glomerular capillaries not only have the traditional pores found between the endothelial cells form that form the capillary walls, but the endothelial cells themselves are also perforated by large holes or fenestrations. Now moving on to the basement membrane. The basement membrane is an acellular glenotelous layer composed of collagen and glycoproteins that is sandwiched between the glomerulus and Bowman's capsule. The collagen provides structural strength and glycoproteins to scourge the filtration of small plasma proteins. The large plasma proteins cannot be filtered because they cannot fit through the capillary pores, but the pores are just barely large enough to permit passers of, of albumin the smallest of plasma proteins. However, because the glycoproteins are negatively charged, they repel albumin and other plasma proteins, which are also negatively charged. Therefore, plasma proteins are almost completely excluded from the filtrate, with less than 1% of albumin molecules escaping into Bowman's capsule. The small proteins that do not slip into the filtrate are picked up by the proximal tubular by receptor medical endo endocytosis then degraded into constituent amino acids that are returned to the blood. Thus, urine is normally protein-free. The final layer of the glomerular membrane is the inner layer of Bowman's capsule. It consists of photocytes, octopus-like epithelial cells that encircle the glomerular tuft. A protocyte bears multiple elongated primary foot processes each of which has many side branches or secondary foot processes protruding from it to the right and to the left. Similar to the fawns of a fern plant, the secondary foot process of one pytocyte integrated with the secondary foot process of adjacent pytocytes as they cup around a glomerular capillary, much as you interlace your fingers when you cup your hands around a ball. The narrow slits between the integrating secondary foot process of adjacent Pytocytes are known as filtration slit, which provide a path pathway through which fluid leaving the glomerular capillaries can enter the lumen of Bowman's capsule. Thus, the route that filtered substances take across the glomerular membrane is completely extra extracellular, first through capillary pores, then through the acellular basement membrane, and finally through capillary filtration slit. Some renal disease characterized by excessive albumin in the urine are the result of disruption of the negative charges within the basement membrane, which make the glomerular membrane more permeable to albumin, even though the size of capillary pores remains constant. Now let's move on to the forces of filtration. In order for fluid to push through these filtration layers of the glomerulus membrane, some type of force is required. There are three physical forces that drive process of glomerular filtration, one of which favors filtration and two that oppose it. The forces involved in glomerular filtration are 
glomerular capillary blood pressure, plasma colicoid osmotic pressure, and Bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure. Let's first look at glomerular capillary blood pressure. This is the force that favors filtration. It is the pressure exerted by the blood flowing within the glomerular capillaries. It ultim ultimately depends on contraction of the heart, which is the source of energy that produces the glomerular filtration. Another factor that affects this pressure is re resistance to blood flow offered by the efferent and efferent arterioles. The high resistance of offered by the efferent arterioles blood pressure does not fall along the length of the glomerular capillaries as it does along other capillaries. The elevated non-detrimental glomerular blood pressure manages to push fluid out of the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule along the entire length of the glomerular capillaries and it is the major force producing glomerular filtration. Glomerular capillary blood pressure has an average value of 55 mm Hg, which is higher than any capillary blood pressure elsewhere. The higher blood pressure is due to a larger diameter of the afferent arteriole compared to the efferent arteriole. Because blood can flow more rapidly into the glomerulus through the wide afferent arteriole than it can leave through the narrow efferent arteriole, Glomerular capillary blood pressure is maintained high as a result of blood dampening up in the glomerular capillaries. The second force involved is the plasma colicoid osmotic pressure, also known as PP. This is caused by the unequal distribution of plasma proteins across the glomerular membrane. Because plasma proteins cannot be filtered, they are in the glomerular capillaries but not in Bowman's capsule. Accordingly, the concentration of oxygen is higher in Bowman's capsule than in the glomerular capillaries. The resulting tendency for oxygen to move by osmosis down its concentration tendency for oxygen. Oh, excuse me. The resulting tendency for oxygen to move by osmosis down its concentration gradient from Bowman's capsule into the glomerulus opposes glomerular filtration. This opposing osmotic force averages 30 mm Hg, which is slightly higher than across other capillaries. It is higher because the more oxygen is filtered out of the glomerular blood, so the concentration of plasma proteins is higher than elsewhere. The last force involved is the Bowman's capsule hydraulic pressure. This is the pressure exerted by the fluid in the initial part of the tubular. It is estimated to be about 15 mm Hg. This pressure, which tends to push fluid out of the Bowman's capsule, opposes the filtration of fluid from the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule. Now that we have covered forces of filtration, let's take a look at what a glomerular filtration rate is. A glomerular filtration rate, also known as a GFR, is a blood test that checks how well your kidneys are working. Your kidneys have tiny filters called Glomeruli. These filters help remove waste and exclude or excess fluid from the blood. A GFR test estimates how much blood passes through these fil filters each minute. A GFR can be measured directly, but is uh, it is a complicated test requiring specialized providers. So GFR is most often estimated using a test called an estimated GFR or an eGFR. To get an estimate, your provider will use a method known as a GFR calculator. A GFR calculator is a type of mathematical formula that estimates the rate of filtration using some or all of the following information about you, such as the result of a blood test that measures creatine, a waste product filtered by the kidneys, your age, your height, your weight, your gender, and your ethnicity. A GFR test is used to help diagnose kidney disease at an early stage. When it is most treatable, GFR may also be used to monitor people with chronic kidney disease or other conditions that cause kidney damage. These include diabetes and high blood pressure. So what happens during a GFR test? A healthcare provider will take a blood sample from a vein in your arm using a small needle. After the needle is inserted, a small amount of blood will be collected into a test tube or a vial. You may feel a little sting when the needle goes in or out. This usually takes less than five minutes. Your GFR results may show one of the following. Either you are normal, which means you probably don't have kidney disease, below normal, which means you may have kidney disease, or far below normal, meaning that you may have kidney failure. Although damage to the kidneys is usually permanent, you can take steps to prevent further damage. Steps may include 
blood pressure medica uh, medications, medications to control blood sugar if you have diabetes, lifestyle changes such as getting more exercise and maintaining a healthy weight, maintaining alcohol, and stop smoking. Before concluding to today's discussion of glomerular filtration rate and the forces involved, I take a quick look at a case study. The case study is called A New Equation to Estimate Glomerular Filtration Rate. <clears throat> the objective of the study was to develop a new estimating equation for the GFR, which would be known as the Chronic Kidney Disease Epidemiology Collaboration, or the CKD-EPI equation. The design of the study was a cross-sectional analysis with separate pooled data for sets for equation development and validation and representative sample of the U.S. population for prevalent estimates. The setting in which the case study took place was in research studies and clinical populations with measured GFRs and National Health and Nutrition Examination Surveys between the years 1999 to 2006. Within the study, 8,254 participants were involved in 10 studies, which were the equation development data set. And there was 3,896 participants in 16 different studies, which, which was the validation data set. <coughs> Prevalent estimates were based on 16,032 participants within the National Health and Nutrition Estimate, or Examination Survey. Measurements that were used for completing this case study was the GFR. It measured as the clearance of exogenous filtration markers and the linear regression to estimate the logothorium of measured GFR for standardized creatine levels, sex, race, and age. The study resulted in the validation data set the CKD-EPI equation performed better than the modification of diet and renal disease study equation, especially at a higher GFR. It also had showed less bias between the median difference in uh, measured estimated GFR, which was 2.5 versus 5.5 milliliters per 1.73 m squared, which helped improve the precision of the test. Intercorial range, or the IQR, of the differences was 16.6 .6 versus 18.3 ml, or milliliters a minute per 1.73 m squared, and had a greater accuracy percentage of estimated GFR within 30% of measured GFR, at 84.1 versus 80.6%. From the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, the median estimated GFR was 94.5 milliliters a minute per 1.73 m squared, which had an IQR of 79.7 to 108.1, versus 85 with the IQR of 72.9 to 98.5 milliliter a minute per 1.73 m squared. And the pre prevalence of the chronic kidney disease was 11.5% with a 95% CI with 10.6% to 12.4% versus a 13.1% with a CI of 12.1 to 14%. The conclusion of this study showed that the CKD-EPI creatine equation was more accurate than the modification of diet and renal disease study equation and could replace it for routine and clinical use. That concludes today's discussion over glomerular filtration rate in forces. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your evening, and I hope to see you in the next discussion. Thank you. Goodbye.